They are visions of Victorian elegance, a fleeting moment frolicking in a field, a winter glance frozen in time. These photos from seemingly so long ago are the newest creations from Isabel Malia, focusing on her collection of authentic 1800s gowns. I get a lot of questions about like, oh my gosh, where did you, where did you get that dress? Like, I, I haven't seen anything like that. It's like, well, it's one of a kind. I hope you haven't seen anything like it. Isabel has a growing collection of dresses worn lifetimes ago. I don't think ruffles will ever die out. They come to me in pretty rough shape and some of them are deaccessed museum pieces. I kind of wonder like, where you been? What have you done? She brings the fabric, the pretty ribbons and petticoats back to life, sometimes needing tiny models to fit these dresses. The smallest one I have has a waistline of 22 inches. Even with a corset, it's very hard to find models that fit them. On the model that it does fit, um, she is a working ballerina. She is very lean, very gorgeous, very elegant. Isabel has had a camera in her hand since she was 12 years old, collecting vintage cameras to capture Victorian and vintage clothing. And she likes to highlight diversity on her photo shoots. It's nice to see different types of people. I think it's very important to show, especially like young girls or anyone who is still working out their self-esteem. Like, hey, this can be you too. It's beautiful on everyone. I really wanted to bring that romantic touch to everybody, and that kind of goes along with using all types of models. Everyone fangirls when they put it on, and they're like, oh my goodness, like, oh, I'm wearing it, oh, it looks so cool. Isabel travels back and forth between her home in New Hampshire and New York, where she graduated college and found some spots for photo shoots that transcend time. Beaches, cliffs, uh, meadows, farms. I like sharing my art and putting little twists on it and trying new things. Photographer Karen Jerzyk takes one giant leap into a futuristic world, launching on another photo shoot for her series, The Lonely Astronaut. Just like a vision one day I was daydreaming about what would happen if, you know, maybe like a hundred years from now we couldn't breathe the air on Earth and, you know, all humanity had to leave the planet. I had this image of this astronaut, this just one lone astronaut, I call it the lonely astronaut. They, they come down to Earth just to like explore how people lived and what things look like. We set out on a mission with Karen and her astronaut model for this shoot, Lexi, to see how she keeps all the humanity out of the photos, except for yeah. one lonely astronaut. Yeah, that's perfect. Going to locations, going super late at night or in the morning. See where the light is right there? She snaps the images quickly before people and traffic move in. A few minutes by this satellite dish, and Karen locks in this stunning storyline. I like taking pictures of kind of just mundane, everyday places that thousands of people pass in a day. I'm looking at it in a different light and hopefully that like they can too. One of my favorite places around here is definitely the Red Arrow Diner. No matter where I am in the US, people are like, oh, the Red Arrow. It spans, I, I just love like old theaters too. You really get a feel for Karen's inspiration inside her studio, stepping into giant sets and back in time. It's kind of like a lot of extensions of myself and like my creativity and things I love to collect. I was born in the 80s, so I'm like obsessed with the 80s. So there's a lot of wallpaper and like toys from the 80s and kind of like a lot of sci-fi stuff going on. 
Karen saved up for several authentic suits and helmets, from high flight to NASA fuel handler suits. When the pandemic set in, she blasted off with her lonely astronaut. I was able to go to like Times Square and take wide angle shots of the astronaut with absolutely no one in it. That was actually very surreal, definitely the most surreal moment in my life. Karen and the spacesuit have traveled the country. It's a place in Virginia and it's called the President's Head. So it's like this giant like rotting bust of Washington behind. Telling universal stories. When you're looking at it, you don't know if it's a man or a woman, um, what age they are. It's like a character that everyone can see themselves in. She always loves to land back home in New Hampshire to highlight her favorite place on this planet. A lot of my astronaut photos are either just standing there or sitting kind of like almost in a like contemplative manner. I guess take life a little slower and kind of be aware of your surroundings and that there is a lot of beauty. No matter where you are, there's always, you know, cool stuff to look at, cool stuff to be, to explore and be curious about.